How would you How feel, would you feel, feel if, you if you went back to the same location? I felt, I felt raised, raised like, like I, I never felt, felt, felt ever before. Can you walk us through what happened? Another guy and another guy walked up to me and princess with like a gun up to her. Here I am standing with my angels and there is the devil. Cause that's exactly what you are. You have the devil inside you. So we're all walking towards the car and I'm looking at everybody funny. Okay, this is docu-series episode one. I got robbed at gunpoint, the breakdown. Okay Chad, so how are you feeling today? Mm, um, I don't know. Okay, so walk me through the beginning of the day. Uh, <clears throat> I woke up, I knew that I had an event to attend to later on that night, but it was just like, for some reason I was just tired, like really, really tired. Um, so I slept most of the day actually. I was supposed to edit a video, post a video, but I didn't. My friend called me and told me, you know, more about the details of the day. And I just kind of told her straight up, like I don't feel like being around the energy. I don't feel like being around influencers. I don't feel like being around just the shit that comes with the influencer lifestyle. From there, I called Princess. I asked Princess and Flo where they going. Princess originally had said that Flo didn't want to go. So then from there, we was like, okay, so what are we going to do? So then from there, we just decided that we were going to go, even though we said we didn't want to go. Um, I got up, I got dressed, and then Princess came and got me, Princess of Flow, and we headed towards the party. So you talked about energy, so you felt like your energy and everything, everybody was already on? You know it's crazy. Since I turned 23, everything has been different. Like my whole world has shifted. Certain things that used to excite me or I felt that was special or fun, it no longer serves a purpose. And even before I turned 23, I was already kind of feeling that transition, that transition phase happening. So going to the club, it was just kind of like, uh. And then certain people that I didn't want to be around, it was just kind of like, uh. So it was just, it was kind of like a forced feeling almost. But then it was for a friend who I wanted to support. And I, I felt like that was the greater purpose there, was to support that friend, so. So do you feel like your intuition had anything to do with anything tonight? Yeah, absolutely. God gives us signs. And if we don't take the signs, we have to learn a lesson. And I learned my lesson. So in all in all, um, just walk me through what happened 10 minutes before everything went down. So, the party was over, it was two o'clock. That's the time the club closed. And it was so crazy. I remember just feeling this energy, but it wasn't negative, the crazy part it wasn't. It was actually the most fun I had that night with my friends. We went outside to the outside area and we was just taking pictures and we was laughing and it was fun. Like, you know what I'm saying? A couple of guys approached me, asked for my number. And then we walked outside and it was just different. Like, it, I don't know how to describe it. I can't describe it. Like, you just know. But in that moment before everything, it was almost as if God was saying, once you go through what you go through, you know that I was there. The angels was there with protecting me. That's what it was. My angels was there. Cause I didn't know where I get this burst of energy. I'm happy, I'm excited. And I thank God that that night we didn't even get drunk. You know, the whole night it started off as a disaster. We couldn't find parking. Then from finding parking, we had to wait to our friend who took like 45 minutes to get to us. It was just so weird. Then we get into the section and we get free bottles. We got into the section for free. We up there, you know, the Wild and Out Party is there. Rappers are there and none of us is drinking. None of us. And if you, if you know me, you know, Princess, when we get together, we love drinking, we love having fun, but we didn't drink. And it was almost at that time, I was just like, this, this is a buzz kill. Like, uh, I could stay home for this, but I feel like we wasn't supposed to get drunk in that moment. It was a reason why we didn't take those shots. Cause if I would have been drunk or anybody else and we would have made the wrong move while getting robbed, I wouldn't be sitting here today probably. Okay, so fast forward to when it actually happened. What happened in the moment of them coming to you? Like, what exactly did they say? All I remember was, we was walking out the club and it was four of us. It was me, Princess, and Flo, and another friend. Then from there, across the street, this is where things get tricky though. My friend gets stopped by her friend. You know, and they started talking. And they start talking, you know, your friends kind of get approached by another friend. You kind of walk them, but you don't stray too far so you don't leave them. But um, I remember I kind of made a remark like, oh shit, y'all, they go that good ass taco truck spot. 
let's get some tacos let's get some tacos still walking we was just kind of conversating about i think what we was going to get some food and i was like let's go get some mcdonald's or something like that just you know making small chatter and right here coming up is where it all happened so Flo got about right here mind you he's behind me and princess and he goes and say where's so i turned around when i turned around i seen princess she was like wait what and right here was the car park three guys walked up to Flo with a gun they snatched him for his stuff. And all I'm hoping is Flo don't try to be a hero. So they, I believe they jacked him. For, and I'm not gonna really speak on what they stole because I don't know. They're comfortable, but I would just tell my side. They jacked him for some of his belongings. Another guy and another guy walked up to me and Princess with like a gun up to our... And then a guy and another guy walked up to me and Princess and pointed guns at our chest and basically just said, like, hand it over. It was almost as if I just, I didn't even grasp what was happening. Like you turn around and you see somebody that you consider a brother with niggas with three guns in his face. One up to his chest and you just kind of like, well damn. To my chest, to the princess chest and just kind of basically tell him like, you know, give us the stuff. I gave him the purse, he walked away. And the blessings is I am with people who are street smart, period. All this materialistic shit, we can get back. But your lives, you can't. But this was him. He kind of like walked away and he came back like, so while I was giving him my phone, I locked it. So I kind of did it smooth like this and I passed it to him. They got in the car and they drove off. And I remember afterwards, I just felt so weird. And the look that was in Princess' face was almost, almost as if, like, like us? us? Why us? My friend, she ran up. She like, bro, what the fuck just happened? Da -da -da -da. She called the cops. Like, I, I, felt, I felt rage. I felt I rage like I never phone. felt ever before, like. But at the same time, I was scared for my life. So my friends calling the cops. We like, let's get the fuck away from here. I don't want to just sit right here, da 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 da. So we walk all the way down here. Cause who's to say we hand them over what they want and they still don't shoot us. Mind you, these niggas hopped out the car with not even a face mask on. And then, yeah. After we walked down there, we came over here. So they end up meeting us here. Our friend posted to our other friend who didn't get robbed. She went to go get our car. Um, police was right there. They came over. They was asking us what happened. I remember I was just being, I was so pissed off that night. Cause one, I didn't want to talk to the police cause I knew they wasn't going to do shit. And then two, I was irritated because it's just like, what the fuck? We just standing here like, go do something. Like, what the fuck are we doing? So what did they take from you? I remember I was telling them I want to talk to my mom. I want to talk to my mom. Can I please call my mom? I don't have my phone. They took my YSL bag, they took inside the bag was my keys, wallet, which of course had important cards, Gucci perfume that I was, I mean, they didn't take my life. That's that's all I care about. The man, he was letting me use his phone. The guys who robbed us, they were little niggas. You could tell they was little niggas. They hopped out the car with no mask. And a lot of people think like, oh, they little niggas, they not buy shit. Dealing with motherfuckers who don't know what they are doing is actually the worst thing to do. You got a guy, a little nigga who don't even really know how to properly shoot a gun. He just got a gun in his hand because he feel like he a real nigga with it. And he's pointing a gun at me. At any moment, this nigga could have been scared enough and accidentally pulled the trigger and shot me on some accidental shit. So you standing in front of me and you scared as shit because you know what you're doing is wrong. And you know you really not about that life. And the crazy part is the nigga couldn't even really look in my eye. He's literally just handed over. Like you know you're not even about this. It was almost as if here I am standing with my angels and there is the devil. Cause that's exactly what you are. You had the devil inside you. And you know that. And I kept saying like, y'all, we can track somebody's phone. Like I'm pretty, I'm like, I'm pretty sure, you know, Princess or Flo, y'all share each other's location. Blah, blah, blah. Like so much things was just running. And the first thing is just like, I was caught lacking. And I remember it was a toy. I was talking to the police. And I seen three girls, they was walking like, from the same club because I seen them at the club. And I said, hold on. And I walked over to them. I said, listen, y'all, we just got robbed. Y'all need to take y'all asses home. I said, put all y'all valuable stuff up where y'all can, but y'all need, they were drunk this up. It's just little stuff like that. Like somebody just got robbed, the police right here. Hey, y'all, ladies, y'all need to get home. Somebody just got robbed. It's like they don't give no fucks at all. So I was irritated by that because why the hell am I doing your job for you? Cool, fast forward. Um, we start tracking the phone down and we found the exact location, which is actually down there. They had dumped the phones around this corner down there. One of the officers went and they were like, we don't see the phones, we don't see the phones, we don't see anything, there's no guys, da 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 da. So we was like, okay, cool. We'll just go down there and look for our phones ourselves because they're once again not trying to do shit. So y'all got in a car, we drove down there. We started looking for our phones. We thought they just dumped them in the sewer. So we started getting irritated about that. And all of a sudden, girl walks out, she's just panicked, she's just like, and I'm like, what? 
And I was like, how did you find my phone? She didn't speak English, so she had to talk to one of the officers. She basically said that, yes, the guys, they took our phones and just kind of dumped them out. She seen the guys dumping them out. Girl who brought the phone down, I think her apartment was like up there. They were standing on the balcony, so I guess they seen the cops and stuff like that. And she came down, she brought us the phone. From there, we like, okay, cool. The phones are here, so let's try to look for the rest of the phone. Uh, one of the phones was actually in the bushes. So uh, what we did was, uh, Flo seen it, he had his flashlight, he picked it out. So I tried to start looking to see if they dumped anything else out, like my keys or anything like that. We didn't find nothing. All I remember was being so terrified, because I'm just like, now what? I go home, I have my spare key, but they have my actual ID and my real key, so now what? So I tell the police officer, I'm like, well, we're up there at home waiting, he goes and say, well, I can't take you home. It's so crazy, because nowadays, black people can't even be pulled over by the cops without other black people feeling like it's up, it's something bad. Cause the lady literally stopped and she just kind of looked and she was like, y'all all right? Like, hey, everything good? Do we need to wait with y'all? And y'all said, no, we good, boo, thank you. I feel like situations like this, you never feel like it'd be you. Like, I grew up in the hood. I seen kids getting shot, like that's nothing. But when the gun is actually pointed at you, it just makes the situation so different. So different here. I have genuine friends, but Let's not get that confused. I'm still alone. Now I'm alone, but I'm not lonely. Let's not get that confused either, but I'm still an African-American here all by myself. So if it wasn't for my actually support team being here, I don't know how it was hard. Princess's case was actually laying right here when we first. What didn't make sense to me at the time was, who in their right mind, unless you have a target, is gonna hop out in front of a crowd of people and go straight to somebody who has a personal belonging at that time and rob the influencers. Wild and Out was there, rappers was there. I mean, outside of them probably having their security and we didn't, even still it's just, it didn't make sense. You was too comfortable doing it. You hopped out, no mask. You know, your license plate is showing, unless it was a stolen car, which it probably could have been, but who knows. It was just, it was too comfortable. So it was just like, start putting two and two together. And I'm not gonna speak too much about that because but biggest thing I've been taught from this is you don't need to speak on it, just do something about it. And I ain't saying go out and do anything crazy, but you know this is the type of person, you feel like this is the person and they have these type of evil energies around you, you need to leave them the fuck alone. So what was a car ride like back home? The car ride back home was just us trying to put two and two together because nothing was making sense. And I remember being annoyed at the fact that the police didn't even want to take me home. Um, so before we even went home, we had to go to Third Ward to get my spare key from a friend. And then from there, I texted a guy and asked him if he could meet me at my house so him and Flo can check my place. Because if these people are at my house waiting for us or, because once again, I thought it was a targeted thing. So who's to say that us getting robbed was the only thing they wanted? to happen, you know what I'm saying? They just robbed us there, but they could have pulled the trigger at my house. And they have the access to do that. So I asked the guy to kind of help Flo check my place. And we stopped and, you know, make sure we was protected before we went back to my place. And when we got there, we opened the door, we checked everything and everything checked out. Everything was fine, nothing was missing. Um, one thing I did notice was when I walked in, my cat was out. If there would have been anybody in that house before we got there, my cat would have been under the bed. She wouldn't have been out just lingering around. My cat does not do people at all. So that was kind of a sign of like, okay. And, and another thing I was noticing is I really paid attention to the fact that I pay attention, if that makes sense. Little things that wouldn't have mattered to other people or would have acted out in a crisis, I was able to sit and think about it to help get things done, to make it make sense. You get what I'm saying? So yeah, but the car ride home was just us all in there trying to figure out what the fuck and how the fuck. So when you got home, said you got somebody to come, you know, check the house. What did you feel when we were by yourself? I didn't actually stay there that night. After we went in there, they checked it out, me and Princess, we kind of stayed back. I still didn't feel protected because they still could come in at any time. You get what I'm saying? So it was just like, let me grab some of my valuable things that I care about the most and let me get out of here. And of course, Princess and Flo, they extended their house to me, which they always do. But you know, at the end of the day, after we get done talking about how we felt, I was still gonna have to go into a room by myself. I didn't, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to be with somebody that I, to be with. I didn't sleep that entire night. How do you? Because even, yeah, I'm at a different place. I feel secure. I'm still thinking about the fact that at any moment, these people could be barging into my house and literally have the access to do it because all they, they have the key. They don't have to break in. So I don't, it's not like I have to be like, okay, if they try to break in, my neighbors is going to be there kind of be like, oh yeah, we heard something. No, they have a key. They can get through the gate. They can get through the apartment. Then the crazy part is the next day was Juneteenth. So I couldn't even go to my front office. So it was just everything that could have happened, that was the worst, happened 
and all I had was my faith to rely in. So who, I think you mentioned this earlier, but who was the first person you called? The first person I asked to call was my mom, but I called from the cop's phone. It was late, it was three o'clock in the morning, and I just remember, keep calling my mom, keep calling my mom, and you know, when we get older, we like, I'm grown now, you know, I'm a thousand miles away from my mom, but nothing compares to just feeling that emotional support from your mother when you are going through something. You get what I'm saying? And I remember just blowing her phone up and I was pissed off. And I'm like, give me your phone. Let me call my mom again. Can I use another phone? But it was just, in that moment, I didn't trust nobody. When you feel like you backed in into a corner, you gonna come out swinging. But I knew in that moment, that wasn't the time to come out swinging. I needed more facts. I needed more evidence. But at the same time, I'm not gonna play stupid. So how would you feel if you went back to like overall, or just? I don't know. Like that don't make me weak, it just I'm extremely blessed to be able to have a platform to tell my story on. Not many stories are told, but here's mine. Filming this video was actually extremely hard, but I'm super blessed to say that I have security that was there as well as we filmed. I was able to let out this burden and try to move now with love instead of fear. Every day is challenging, but I find myself gaining my power back. People, please, if you have a gut instinct, listen to God. That is God speaking to you. Some people like to look at it as my life almost ended, but I looked at it as God saved me again. Love you guys.